Hi students, as a part of UV visible spectroscopy, I'm going to discuss about uh, the very important terms involved in UV visible spectroscopy, which are chromophore, the first one is chromophore, and the second one is oxochrome, third one is bathochromic shift or OR, a red shift, and next one is hypsochromic shift or OR, blue shift, and the next one is uh, hyperchromic shift and the sixth one is a hypochromic shift so among all the six very important terms involved in uv visible spectroscopy so today i am going to focus only on the two important terms which are involved in the uv visible spectroscopy that is the first one is chromophore and the second one is oxochrome so first let us discuss about um, the chromophore. 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 Now do remember that whenever the UV visible light is passed through the sample, the whole sample or the whole molecule will not absorb the UV visible light or UV visible radiation. Only some portion or some particular part of the sample or the molecule will absorb the UV visible light or, or UV visible radiation whenever the UV visible light or radiation is passed through the sample or the molecule. And that particular portion or the part of the molecule or the sample which will absorb the UV visible light or OR radiation is called as chromophore. And as this particular moiety or portion or part of the sample or the molecule is absorbing the UV visible light or radiation, the whole sample or OR the molecule will get the get the color so because of this particular chromophore only the molecule gets the color so based upon this we can say that uh, the chromophore is a substance which gives or which imparts the color to the sample or the molecule so based upon all this stuff which i have discussed with you it is amply clear that there are two definitions possible for the chromophore the first definition is the substance or the moiety or the portion or OR, the part of the molecule or the sample which will absorb the UV visible light or radiation is called as chromophore or OR. The other definition for the chromophore is the substance or the portion or the part or the moiety of the molecule or the sample which imparts the color to the unsaturated molecule is called as chromophore. And examples of the chromophores are unsaturated, unsaturated moiety or part or the molecule. So examples of uh, the chromophores are the diene, diene. So diene means we have to focus on unsaturated bonds and in this carbonyl C double bond O is the chromophore which will absorb the UV visible radiation and impart some color to the carbonyl compounds which are the aldehydes and ketones of the organic molecules and the benzene. The whole molecule is unsaturated. Since the whole molecule is unsaturated, it will it will absorb the UV visible light or or the radiation. Right. I hope you got it. So this is about the chromophore. Now coming to the second, the second important term involved in UV visible spectroscopy is oxochrome. Oxochrome. A U X O C H R O M E. Oxochrome. Now let us see what is oxochrome. Oxochrome is the moiety or portion or OR. I'm talking about OR or the part of the of the 
unsaturated molecule of the unsaturated molecule which enhances the absorption maximum which enhances the absorption absorption maximum which enhances the absorption maximum that is lambda max which enhances the absorption maximum or absorption maximum is referred as lambda max is called as oxochrome is called as oxochrome i hope you got the definition now before going to discuss the oxochrome with the help of for the two examples which have been depicted on the board first and foremost we have to discuss one particular relation one particular relation so based upon this relation you can understand what exactly the oxochrome is doing how exactly the oxochrome is increasing the lambda max or absorption maximum of the unsaturated molecule so that relation which clearly gives the role of the oxochrome when it is attached to the attached to the unsaturated moiety how the how the absorption maximum or lambda max is increasing is increasing is increasing right so that relation is that relation is number of electrons involved in the conjugation number of electrons involved in the conjugation is directly proportional to absorption maximum or or lambda max so this is the relation with the help of this relation this with the help of this relation we can remember or we can know how the oxochrome which is directly attached to the unsaturated moiety of the unsaturated molecule is enhancing the absorption maximum or lambda max lambda max number of electrons involved in conjugation is directly proportional to absorption maximum or lambda max now see so students here so we have to talk about the unsaturated moiety when we are discussing about the uv visible spectroscopy why already clearly explained the in the basic classes or the introduction classes uh, related to the uv visible spectroscopy uv visible spectroscopy we have to talk about the pi bond because the pi electrons which are part of the pi bond are flexible are flexible and gives some information gives some information now it is unsaturated molecule and how many pi bonds are there in this so two pi bonds pi bond is nothing but uh, this bond this bond pi bond is nothing but this bond it's a second bond this is the pi bond or this is a pi bond this is a pi bond so two pi bonds are present in 1 3 beta diene this is 1 3 beta diene students and two pi bonds are present in 1 3 beta diene and in each pi bond uh, there are two electrons there are two electrons because already we know we are well versed that uh, the bond is a combination of the two electrons now as uh, the pi bond we are talking about the pi bond definitely it will result by the combination of the two electrons only now the pi bond means two electrons so each pi bond contains two electrons and this pi bond is flexible in nature since the pi bond is flexible in nature whatever the electrons which are associated with these pi bonds which are flexible in nature so definitely they will be flexible so the electrons pi electrons are flexible in nature right flexible in nature so since this pi electrons are flexible in nature they won't be intact like that only so they will migrate they will move from one atom to another atom as these are flexible right so they will move from one atom to another atom one atom to another atom so this is nothing but the conjugation 
This is nothing but the conjugation. Now, how many pi electrons are involved in the conjugation students in the 1, 3 beta union? As pi bond is made up of two electrons. So in this pi bond, two electrons are present. And in this pi bond, two electrons are present. So totally, how many electrons? How many electrons are involved in conjugation? Four electrons are involved in conjugation students. When the four electrons were involved in the conjugation, the lambda max of this particular unsaturated molecule, which is so called as 1,3 beta ion, is 270 nanometers. 270 nanometers. When four electrons are there in the conjugation. Now, whenever, whenever, whenever NH2 moiety is attached to the same 1,3 beta ion, same 1, 3 beta again, then the lambda max, uh, which is 270 nanometers, enhances to 240 nanometers. Enhances to 240 nanometers. Just to guess what could be the reason, students? Just guess. The reason is NH2 here, right, on the nitrogen, nitrogen belongs to fifth group element. So since it belongs to fifth group element, uh, how many electrons will be part of the nitrogen? Five electrons will be part of the nitrogen. Out of the five electrons, three are participating in the bonding. The two are participating in the bonding with the two hydrogens. And other one is participating in bonding with this carbon. So three are over. Right? So how many are left? Two electrons are left. And those two electrons will be in the form of one non-bonding pair of electrons. One non-bonding pair of electrons. So non-bonding pair of electrons, the name itself suggests that this particular pair of electron is not participating in the bonding. Since it is not participating in the bonding, we can say that this particular non-bonding pair of electron is free. Is free. So since it is free, it will involve in conjugation. It will involve in conjugation. Right? So these two electrons enter inside the molecule. Now these two electrons of this bond will shift to the single bond. And this pi bond will convert this shift to another. So two electrons here are shifted toward in, inside the molecule. So two electrons here have been shifted inside the molecule. Two electrons here. So totally six electrons are involved in the conjugation. Six electrons are involved in the conjugation. I already have discussed that number of electrons involved in the conjugation is directly proportional to absorption maximum or lambda max. So now, as we are moving from 1,3 beta diene to amino 1,3 beta diene, what is happening in the case of 1,3 beta diene, only four electrons uh, were in the conjugation. But whenever 1,3 beta diene has been converted into amino 1,3 beta diene, now six electrons have been in uh, the conjugation. Now, based upon that relation, which I have gave for you, based upon that, we can clearly say that, uh, clearly say that, the absorption maximum will be more for this particular amino 1,3 beta diene when compared to normal 1,3 beta diene whose lambda max is 270 nanometers and with the introduction of amino group as the conjugation is increasing the lambda max has been shifted to the longer wavelength which is nothing but 240 nanometers 240 nanometers now what is this NH2 student? So this NH2, what it is doing? It is enhancing the, it is enhancing the absorption maximum or lambda max of 1,3 beta diene from 270 nanometers to 240 nanometers. I try to recap the definition of uh, oxochrome. Oxochrome is the substance which enhances the absorption maximum or lambda max of the 
unsaturated molecule based upon that particular definition we can say that this particular amino group is is oxoprome 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 this nh2 group is oxoprome students i hope you understood this so in a similar fashion in the similar fashion so how many pi bonds are there students six pi bonds so each pi bond contains two pi electrons so two pi electrons these two pi electrons shift towards this this two pi electrons shift towards this this two pi electrons shift towards this so totally how many pi electrons are involved in the conjugation how many flexible electrons are involved in the conjugation six electrons are involved in the conjugation now whenever it has been converted to whenever it has been converted to amino benzene amino benzene already i have discussed that one non bonding pair of electron will be a part of the nitrogen and this non bonding pair of electron is free so since it is free it will donate its electrons inside the ring so based upon the same explanation we can explain this also so two electrons two electrons here two electrons here two electrons here so two electrons two electrons two electrons so only six electrons work in the conjugation but whenever the nh2 group is attached to the same benzene now now these are the two electrons 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 so totally 1 2 3 4 so eight electrons are involved in the conjugation and based upon the relation what I have given between the number of electrons uh, present or involved in the conjugation and absorption maximum or lambda max it is very clear or amply clear that uh, amply clear that uh, so this particular uh, lambda max will increase from 255 nanometers to 280 nanometers now with the introduction of uh, nh2 what happened the absorption maximum or lambda max has been increased from 255 nanometers to 289 to 280 nanometers of the benzene now with the introduction of what nh2 now nh2 here is oxo propose to this next to here is oxo pro so in this video i have explained only the two important terms involved in the uv visible spectroscopy in the next video i am going to explain the the remaining four important terms involved in the uv visible spectroscopy so thanks for watching